I'm Tyler and welcome to Lowtown. In this video, we're gonna be covering our ground cover options available in the campaign. This is gonna be some of our new terrain trays, our new sculpted battle board, and even some sculpted ground options to help you build in line or as a base layer if you needed to do any scatter building. So let's go check it out. All right, so first up we have our Breaker Trio terrain trays. A couple things to know about terrain trays. They are a 12 inch by 12 inch neoprene sheet that is double sided. So there are two sheets, side A and side B. And there is a metal, a steel sheet in between them, uh, which makes it magnetic. So for pieces that have anchor magnets, they can just pop right on there. You can get some cool angles on them. Or uh, even if you just need to shift your entire build or just fly it in, fly it out, whatever you need to do, that's kind of the best part of the terrain tray. It's a very useful item. And uh, it also helps with negative space builds. So if you want to build on top of something that still gives texture and still gives life to a thing, that's the whole purpose of the terrain tray. Now, this breaker design is three separate designs, uh, but the whole purpose of them is to give that impression of waves crashing against the cliffside. Uh, so we start with our, we have our concave shoreline. So it has this sort of like cool 90 degree L here, and then we have our straight, which is just like right on the side of the most basic one you can ever have. And then we have our convex breaker, which helps do uh, like 90 degree turns. So the cool thing about this is that this system is also modular. Uh, that's kind of the whole purpose of having three of them. The straight is the side A of a terrain tray, and then side B is this guy, the convex breaker. And so that adds a lot of versatility meaning you can get the same tray a couple of times and you can still get a lot of different uses out of it. Uh, the same thing for the concave breaker, the opposite side of which is our shoreline, which we will talk about uh, next. But for right now, um, there is a lot of different ways that you can kind of mix and match these things. You can make an entire island out of your convex put four of these together, make this cool little island. Uh, having two straights together can even just give you a nice run of uh, an entire mountainside wall, right? You know, you can put this here. Now you have this whole mountain escarpment line uh, where waves are crashing right up against it. Um, another neat thing is just how these things play together like this. You can even Go ahead and set this one right here. Now you've got this whole nice corner. What's really neat about this kind of building is that it's all built within a uh, two foot by two foot, right? And this is still giving me a lot of playability. This is still giving me a lot of uh, versatility in my negative space. Now, one last thing to mention is, so this entire design was based on this open lake, this open mountain lake. And so that's why everything in here is matching. It does match it, uh, outside of the color right now, just because of these imperfect prototypes. Uh, but that is how the design works. It's all universally the same system that feeds into each other uh, to help the modularity. So yeah, that explains our breaker system. And what we're going to talk about next is our shoreline as it feeds directly into it uh, in, in a very interesting way, right? Okay, so uh, we have up next the Shoreline Trio. Now, it's the same design uh, as before with the breakers. It is the concave shoreline right here, feeding into the straight shoreline all the way over to the convex shoreline. Similarly to the breakers, these designs uh, actually pair very well, no matter which side you're kind of putting them to. Uh, so, you know, the concave fits directly into the convex on both sides, right? So that's kind of the exact same thing that was going on with the breakers. A uh, bigger uh, design difference between them is where in the breakers, the water was coming all the way up to the edges of the trays. The water up here is, you know, we're, we're really trying to get into the land part of it. So this is much better for, for docks. So if you have any of your scaffolding, like the dock builder, this is perfect for that kind of stuff. And then bleed out into the actual breakers themselves or open water, however you want to do it. But the other cool part is 
that these designs are actually kind of lifted directly in from the sculpts that we made for the packed dirt uh, sculpted ground covers. So these trays are perfect for building at sea level or, or like coastal villages, whatever. Basically anything kind of dockside based, this is, this is a great collection for that. And in fact, I want to show you how these things actually bleed together. So we're going to take the straight shoreline here and we're going to mix it with the straight breaker. And then we're going to have that breaker uh, go directly into the mountain lake. So you can see how these designs from the open lake ripples bleeding into the breaker and then the, the crashing waves of the breaker sort of like terminate into the shoreline here. Uh, everything is built with that in mind. This could be a great run for any sort of like pirate campaign or, or, or building out your entire dock and then even getting into the open water out here. Uh, but additionally, uh, this feeds us directly into our next topic, which is the packed dirt. Okay, so our shoreline straight is now feeding directly into our two new packed dirt designs. So we have this really awesome, uh, just sort of regular packed dirt. We've got all these branches and bushes and things, some stones hidden everywhere. Um, but the general feel of this was to be something that you could build your houses directly upon, uh, some, you know, just dirt villages, dirt roads, that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is also um, actually pulled from uh, some of the sculpted ground cover designs from our 4x4 and our 2x2, and then extrapolated upon. Uh, but it, it's it's got this really awesome feel, and again, feeds directly back into the shoreline. And on this side, we have our slum dirt. Uh, that's kind of what, we, that's what we're calling it. So there's a lot of little hidden goodies everywhere that we pulled directly from other sculpts like the roofs and the scaffolding and everything. And we also have some wagon ruts into the actual dirt, giving it, again, a nice worn lived-in feel, but additionally, maybe even more traveled than the regular packed dirt. Uh, actual people have been here. Maybe something has broken down in the middle of it uh, and, uh, you know, sort of changed the landscape. And it's really cool because this is, this is perfect for scatter building right? Uh, putting a tower in the middle of that, or, or even, you know, your, your escarpments or things, this is a great way to kind of just give a real sense of depth and scale, as well as sort of finalizing the picture of whatever your build is. And uh, you can litter this stuff with, with other bushes or any other plants from wildlands, and it just starts to open it up into a really great uh, uh, battle terrain. Okay, so that was the B side to these terrain trays as it fed into the shoreline, but the A side is actually our fabric versions of our cobblestone design. And the neat part about that is uh, these were not shown off during the uh, Kickstarter, obviously, but uh, this is, again, pulled directly from the sculpt of the 4x4 four four and the 12x12 12 12 sculpted battle board, which we'll be talking about later. Uh, it's the same, the, the cool part about this is the neoprene steel sheet, so it will be magnetic, and you can put all your buildings directly on it, or if you just want to have some long stretches of easy built roads, that's kind of the best part about this 12x12 12 12 terrain tray. It does the same functions as pretty much all the other cobblestone. It has the exact same design, uh, but it is also just kind of... Uh, built with the terrain tray design in mind. Uh, sort of fly in, fly out, magnetic, all that stuff. And this will be the slum cobblestone design. Now this one is still in development, uh, but this is what we have currently to show off. Uh, so its intention is to be like the slum dirt, uh, sort of run down, well-worn, well-traveled, broken cobblestone. So there's going to be a lot of cracks. There's going to be a lot of uh, dust debris, like, you know, like gray concrete kind of stuff, you know, broken in there. And uh, it, it's it's going to play really well with the other versions of this stuff. Uh, and so you're going to have a lot of variation on it, and you can mix this with your, with your battle board as well for a lot of good variation. So just like the packed dirt was great for scatter building, so is this cobblestone. 
right? So I can take these buildings and I can put them right drop down and it's fully built within the city structure, right? It goes right under the cobblestone. It goes right into the city streets. Um, you know, the other cool thing that you can do though is instead of even just putting it directly uh, in line with the cobblestones and making everything follow the grid, you can actually push it off kilter and you can make it break the sort of pattern here. But even if you need to, it's very simple to put it right back in line if you want your city streets to be straight or you want all this kind of like nice uh, uh, linear design. Last up, we have our rustic wood terrain tray and the neutral stone terrain tray. Now, uh, this is these two designs are very universal. You can use these for a lot of different things, interior, exterior, wilderness, city building, a lot of different options available to you. But the best part about this, this is one of our cheapest ways to do a lot of cool interior uh, buildings with wood, uh, fast, dirty, and it's better than just using a dry erase board, right? So instead of having to draw on the on the board and, and make all your walls, you can actually just put the freestanding walls directly on there. And now you're getting any sort of unique building that you want, any kind of unique layout that you want. Um, now, you know, obviously within the constraints of the pieces, but this is even true with the uh, city builder floors, right? You know, most of those are even with the diagonals and everything, they kind of conform to certain designs, but this kind of leaves you free and open to do whatever you want, put whatever kind of freestanding walls you want. And the best part about the walls is that they will have a magnet on the bottom, so they'll just click right in and, and be very secure uh, on the actual tray itself uh, or with each other. Now, the same is true on the neutral side, the neutral stone side, right? This can look like gravel. It can be dungeon stone or whatever it needs to be. And even when you put the freestanding wall on there, it does end up kind of looking like an exterior fence or or even a it could even look like some scrapped together mine or, 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 you know, we've even kind of shown that off, I think a couple of videos, but, um, the other thing that I really appreciate about this wood floor design is sort of the subtle details. Everything was actually pulled from the rustic wood floor, the four by four. So all these slats and everything have been, uh, varied and have sort of like been altered, uh, but they were all pulled from that. And we even have a couple little nails in there uh, throughout the design. So you get kind of a bit of character and all of the richness and the color and the shading and everything really gives it this nice gravity and depth to it. This is one of my favorite pieces uh, simply because it's just going to open up a lot of options for quick building either, you know, this massive mansion that's all of these things built with interior walls or uh, a grand ballroom that you put between all of your actual sculpted floor and it's, and it's lowered into the ground. Uh, there's just so many possibilities with this kind of universal design that uh, I'm excited to see what everybody makes. Okay, so next up we have our sculpted cobblestone battle board. Now this is our first sculpted versions of battle boards. Our previous ones came from Wildlands and they were an ABS board, right? Just an ABS frame with a neoprene fabric uh, grafted on top, like glued on top. This is 12 inches by 12 inches. And uh, the neat part about that is it, it is magnetic on the top here. It has the uh, actual steel sheet. And then the opposite side was a side where you could actually put any of your existing terrain trays utilizing these magnets here. Right? Now, the cool part about this is, you know, this is still magnetic itself, right? And the same thing with side A. Still magnetic, can move that, move it in and out, fly it in and out, however I need to actually manipulate it, it's great. Now the difference here for the cobblestone is this beautifully textured side, which is also gonna be painted, is uh, unfortunately it is not magnetic uh, because of the texture nature of it, it is not able to be, but it will still be within this floor height ABS frame and it will still have the opposite B side and so you can put any of your existing terrain trays on that, and then that would still be magnetic, so you can mix and match those as necessary. So you still have all that functionality, it's just going to be with a new, prettier version of a battleboard.
So next up, I just want to show you how this kind of translates into the actual sculpts themselves. This is the 4x4 and the 2x2 two two cobblestones. So this is also going to come painted. It is a battle board that will be painted on this design uh, because it doesn't have the fabric. So uh, it will not be available unpainted, but that's kind of the advantage of this. This is 12 inches of uh, the cobblestone the way we would produce it normally on these pieces. So it is kind of just a, it's a great way, it's a cost-effective way of making a 12 by 12 cobblestone area. Okay, so then you've most likely seen a lot of this in a couple of the builds, uh, like the, namely the Dockside, Wharf Watch, and uh, maybe one other, I think the Market Square. But the cool part about this as well is that because of the floor height and with this seawall and urban elevation system in general, we really made those to pair within this entire design. So even just with three seawalls, I've now elevated it up an inch and uh, we've kind of given it this really interesting uh, 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 new sort of elevation in general for a cityscape. And you can put your, you know, you can put your buildings directly on top of it, just like the terrain trays, be a little off kilter or whatever, but it's also already raised up, which kind of gives it this really dynamic feel. And the neat part there too, is when you're utilizing the seawalls, you can put an entire run of them, or you can switch those out and sort of give the great, the time and respect it deserves to be front and center. And then easy enough to uh, make full runs of these seawalls. But as you can tell here, this is still being lifted up uh, with a convenient sort of like stilt or, or other thing that holds on this end. I could remove this and then build out towards uh, other parts of the city. I could continue to seawall all the way across from here and continue to stretch beyond the 12 inches and maybe make a two foot by two foot build or a three foot build, whatever you kind of need. These are really great for that kind of quick uh, and easy builds with a lot of neat texture, uh, which we're really excited to add to our collection. Okay, and finally we have our actual sculpted ground options. So we have our cobblestone and we have our packed dirt right here. The packed dirt and the cobblestone all come with these same designs. We have a two by two, a four by four, and then we also have a, sm uh, a large and a small diagonal. Interestingly, the diagonals are double-sided. So you actually get both the dirt and the cobblestone within one piece. Uh, the cobblestone 2x2 two two and 4x4 four four, and the packed dirt 2x2 two two and 4x4 four four are not double-sided, but they do come with anchor magnets. Um, so it kind of like usual floor sculpts, right? The neat part about all of this design is that this makes it very easy to mix and match these floors with your diagonals. Uh, so this is really just a, uh, the, the simplest three pack system ever uh, when you're trying to do some of this exterior building, uh, either this this well-groomed tiled floor uh, uh, that would be like city streets or whatever, or even just sort of outskirts kind of stuff or dirty uh, mud village or something like that. Uh, th this helps just kind of bridge all of those systems together. Now the two by two, the four by four, uh, both have biscuit holes with the, within the cobblestone system. The large diagonal actually does also have biscuit holes, but the small diagonal doesn't. Um, most of that is just because it has a fair, fairly narrower use case, and it also just is too small to actually fit any of that. Similarly, with the packed dirt, we didn't put any biscuit holes in there, uh, as the cobblestone can actually be used with your urban elevation pieces, so you can actually take your 2x2 two two riser or your seawall or your half archers or whatever, end up putting the biscuit hole together and then that design carries over and you can also have elevated pieces where they're just free uh free hanging uh didn't make as much sense to do it with like natural ground <laughs> like this um so one of the other uh really cool parts of how these diagonals work is that they work directly in tandem with our small and our large diagonals uh, so you can put these directly in line with the rest of your build to actually get it back to square, right? So 
one of the things with these diagonals that's great is you can build directly on top of any of your sculpted designs or your battle boards or your terrain trays, and you can have these really neat cuts into everything. But uh, for anyone who also wants those things to be directly in line, all on the same level, if you want your floor and your building to meet at the same center, this is a great option for that. Uh, the, this small backfill works with the small diagonal, the large backfill works with the large diagonal and as you can see creates a full four by four and a full two by two when you're working with your diagonals one other cool neat thing uh like i showed you before with the riser you know you can even build independent bridges this way right you can have that elevated and raised and the diagonal backfill this larger one is perfect for that and you can also have it build off into different sections uh, have really it's it's just another diagonal build at that point yeah so that should cover everything you'll need to know about these designs well that wraps up our ground cover options for more information on lowtown go ahead and check the link in the description below and for anybody who missed out on the campaign uh our pledge manager is going to open up on may 2nd and we accept late pledges thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the archives